Good morning. An update on the total raised by the singing company for their coffee morning Saturday that rolled on into Sunday is £438. So that's a, that's a massive effort there and well done to the singing company and everything they've done there. Andrew now had about three octaves that he can use on the piano and when we pay for the rest he can, uh, he can let loose on that there. Thank you also for everyone that helped with the caroling. Obviously the bands were out in the high street, but those that collected the total raise yesterday was £1,289.29p. Uh, there we do have, we were short on collectors and we have been given extra permits this year by the council. Uh, so anyone that can help, every Saturday we're in Stockton. So it's easy to remember, 10 till 2, uh, not the full thing, but 10 till 2 is the range that bands will be there. If you can see in after, and just offer an hour of your time to help collect uh, in the high street, that'd be much appreciated. After this morning's service, uh, there will be a faith lunch. If you haven't brought anything, don't be shy, please stick around. Uh, we will be moving some tables and chairs around, sharing some fellowship, sharing some food together, and then we're doing crafts for the afternoon. We're preparing our little knitted angels uh, that we started announcing almost 12 months ago. Just over 2,000 of them are all going to get little tags put on them. And then next Friday at 7.45, we're going to meet here, as many as can, and we're going to go and distribute those around the area. You'll learn a lot more about it this afternoon. Hang around, do some crafts with us. All the dates for the rest of the Christmas period, uh, the sections know theirs, but the, uh, the Sunday services are on the board and there will be leaflets available in the foyer uh, from Monday for you to take away to make sure you know what's happening, when and where you need to be. We don't have our little post box this year for giving out cards with our sustainability policy. We don't want to be having cardboard flying around, but we are going to bring a board down. And if people want to share a message or a card for the core to share with each other, we're going to have a board down that they can be displayed on uh, if you have cards to give to the core. And not to move on too quickly, first weekend with the decorations and Christmas, in the new year, 6th of, June, 6th of January, we'll be starting a men's fellowship. Uh, so we are going to meet for some breakfast together, go for a walk, share some time, share some stories, uh, and spend time together to uh, strengthen those relationships. So January the 6th, after eating everything, we're going to meet up for breakfast. I'll be good to go, Paul, so don't worry about that. I'll be having breakfast. See Paul if you want more details, but put that as a date in your diary. Thank to people that are continuing to support the food bank. Everything we do at Christmas, we still get people coming through the door every day looking for help there. So Matty is putting what we're short of that particular week on the Facebook group. If you can't find that, let me know. I'll help you find it. But the box is filling up. It's much needed. It's something we'll continue to do. So thank you for the commitment there. The flowers this week are from Brian and Jean. So we hope you enjoy those. Thank you for sharing. There is a slot next week for flowers. So if you'd like a set to take home, if you see Gillian, uh, and she'll sort those out. Thank you. Enjoy your worship. Thank you. Thank you. It's all right. I've just thought of something else as well. Next Sunday evening is Chris Dingle Sunday service, and the Chris Dingles have got to be made up. Now, if you want to help make Chris Dingles rather than collect, we could do with about five people to help make the Chris Dingles, and that will free me up because I don't mind collecting. So if you're free around 10 o'clock next Saturday morning and you want to help make Chris Dingles, just let me, just let me know because there's 120 to make. The band played, all hail the Lamb, enthroned on high. And in uh, Revelation chapter 5, we, hear, we read these words, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them say, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. So today is Stir Up Sunday, and I'll explain what that is going to entail a little bit later on, but it's also Christ the King Sunday as well. And so we're going to start by standing and uh, putting Jesus at his rightful place at the centre of this church and at the centre of our lives as we sing all Hail the Lamb, and we'll sing this through twice, and then there'll be a call to worship that will join in with as well.
we'll join together in a call to worship from Psalm 93, which will come on the screen. And if you join in with the, the, bold. Word, the bold print, the Lord reigns, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. And we continue in our worship this morning by singing, How lovely are the mountains of the feet of him, with that chorus that says, Our God reigns. There's instruments here, kids, if you want to come and get some instruments to play, while we sing this song. Adults, if you want to get an instrument, you can. We're in the chorus. Okay. Are you getting one, Oscar? Yeah? Ready when you are. Go on. <laughs> together you sit there instruments down there kids because we're going to say our prayers you can play them later on 
That's great. We'll pray together. Oh, Jesus, you are the King of glory. You are the Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. And we pray today on this Christ the King Sunday that your kingdom will reign forever in our hearts and in this world. Lord, we pray that your kingdom will come here now, bringing justice, righteousness, hope, love, peace, mercy and grace to everyone who lives in it. But Lord, on this day, we ask that you would rule in our hearts, that you would lead this world and that you would give, govern this kingdom. Lord, honestly, we come before you and we know that we often have our own plans and agendas and we want to be rulers of our little kingdoms and we ask for your forgiveness when we do that. Lord, we know that we sometimes live in a time where we'd rather idolise the king of sports and the kings of pop rather than worship you. And on this day, we would ask that you would help us to know how to live as your kingdom people in these times. Lord, there are lots of people who claim to be king in this world, who terrorise, who overtax, who humiliate and exploit people and abuse those who they are called to lead. Help us this morning to spread the good news of the different kind of king that you are. Thank you for being a different kind of king. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness in our lives. We thank you for your generosity and we thank you for loving us. And on this day, Lord, we pray that your kingdom will come. Because if ever a world needs Jesus, it's now. But for now, as we come together, we put aside the things of the week, even the things that have been bothering us this morning before we got here. And we just ask that as, you, as we worship you, the Christ our King, that you would come and meet with us in a special way and that we would leave this place feeling uplifted, challenged, but ready to work for you where you have called us to be. Amen. So we'll listen straight away to the YP band, please, Ian.
So, the Sunday before Advent is traditionally the last Sunday in the church's year, liturgical year, and it is called Stir Up Sunday or Christ the King Sunday. Um, but in the Christian calendar, it's not a Sunday for looking back, quite the opposite. It's a time to reflect where we are now, and it's a time to look forward. Uh, but it's also a time to reflect where we are in our walk with Jesus. Are we closer to him than we were this time last year? Are we further away? If we are, why? I can see there's some activity going on the platform behind me. We're training her to be officers already. <laughs> She's shy everywhere she goes, apart from when she comes here. And that says something about here, doesn't it? Hey, look, really. But anyway, uh, many Church of England communities on this Sunday will be um, taking part in a Feast of Christ the King and asking the question, is Christ our King? Does he reign over our lives? Does he reign over our hearts? The stir-up prayer is, there's a stir-up prayer that's going to come on your screens. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously bring forth the good fruit of, the, of good works. May you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's also traditionally a Sunday where the families gather together to make the Christmas pudding or the Christmas cake. And it goes back to, oh, it goes back centuries, actually. But Prince Albert in the Victorian era wanted to raise the profile of Christmas, didn't he? And um, ever since then, on the, the, the last Sunday of the church year, families would gather to make the Christmas pudding. Every member of the family would stir it and they would make a wish. When the Christmas pudding's made in church or cake, people get together to make the cake, which we're going to do in a minute, and then they stir it and make a prayer. How many of you are in Bake Off mode? How many of you watch Bake Off? It's getting, it's getting towards the final, isn't it? It's the final next week. So the finalists will be thinking about their showstopper and what it's going to be like. Hopefully this is going to be a showstopper this morning. <coughs> so in true Bake Off mode, when you make a traditional Christmas cake, you know there's Christmas traditions in it. The cake must have 13, well, 12 recipes, but there's 13 clues. The finished article should have a garnish of holly on the top of it because it represents the crown of thorns. And our Bible reading is going to be uh, talking about the death of Jesus this morning, which is strange when we just go into Advent. Because even now, we are pointing towards the cross. The coin, if there's a coin that goes in the pudding, that, re that represents the true treasure. And our treasure is Jesus. The activity of stirring up the ingredients when we get to that bit symbolises our hearts being stirred up in preparation for Christ. It should be stirred from east to west to represent the journey of the wise men. And every family member, as I said, should take a turn in either making a wish or praying a blessing. So this morning, I'm not going to have all the children up here because it might be a bit chaotic. It might be chaotic if I only have two, but we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> So I want some volunteers, or two volunteers, to come and help make the Christmas cake, or the Christmas pudding. See, I can't say no to them, can I, when they all put their little hands up? <coughs> right, come on. Do you think we can make a Christmas cake with only the Bible instead of a Mary, Mary Berry recipe book? Yeah? Do you think we can? Come on, then. Come on, then. Lillian and Faith are coming. Amelia's coming. We've got three. Archie's coming as well. Oh, right. So, to make it a little bit easier, I've put the names of the ingredients on the boxes. All right. And I've got teaspoons and we've got wooden spoons here. So, there's your recipe book. Mm -hmm. Find the clues. <laughs> you can't, can you? <laughs> hey? But there are, well, there are 12 clues and the 13th one is an instruction out there. So, if you share number one, you shout number one out loud. Somebody's going to read the first clue out and it'll have, a, it'll have the word of, of food in it and you've got to guess what it is. Right, who's got number one? Go on then, Ian. Half a pound of judges, 523. Half a pound of judges, 523. <coughs> Shall we ask Ian to read the clue? Can you read the clue? Jail brought Sister's curds in a bowl for a kid. 
jail bought Caesarea curds in a bowl fit for king. So this is... Butter. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the butter. Yeah. Butter goes in there. Just put it all in. That's it, all in. Just dunk it in, Faith says. Just dunk it in, she says, Faith. Detail at the kitchen, please. There's some red ones in a box. So, what? Oh, thanks, darling. Oh, and where are we? Number five. What are clue number five? Thank you. 
That's it, another one, just a little one, just a little one. That's it, good girl. Next clue, number seven. Should we say? Tiny bit, a tiny bit. Can you answer? Put some on your hands. That's it. Let's get that out of the way. Number eight. Spices. There were no spices. There were no spices. There Come on then, Lily, leave it go. Yeah. That's it. Good girl. Next one. Come on, Melody Joy. You're going to help. You're going to help. A little bit of spices in there. A little bit in. Good girl. Just put a lemon. Just put a lemon. Oh, that's it. That's a little spoon. Right, where are we now? Number nine. Number 11, we're nearly there. Number 12. Who's got number 12? Come on, Rowley. Should I sing? Thirteenth, going to tell them what to do. We're not beating anybody with a stick. Carry on, right? Let's go together now. Let's 
mixture everywhere. Each ingredient in the Christmas pudding or the cake. It looks interesting. It does look interesting. We're going to cook it tomorrow and see what it, see what it turns out like. And if it's looking good, we'll get it out next week at Chris Dingle's service, eh? <laughs> but each ingredient represents something to do with the Christian faith. The sultanas and the raisins um, represent the fact that each one is special and unique and we are all different and we are created by God and loved unconditionally by him. The butter symbols richness and goodness and it reminds us that Jesus is good, that He is the good above all other and he brings wholeness and healing if we invite him into our hearts. The flour provides the pudding with structure and support and if we live our lives to God and, uh, and live a Christian life of praying and reading the Bible then he will give us all the support that we need in our ups and downs. The spice gives the pudding its flavouring and there's quite a bit of spice went in there so there'll be quite a lot of flavour in that pudding. <laughs> but if we live, if we live and walk by God and become followers of Jesus then, then he flavours our life doesn't he and he promises that. And the beaten eggs bind all the ingredients together. And that reminds us the importance of being church community, especially at Christmas when it's time to get busy. It's important that we bind ourselves with the story of Jesus' birth at this time. We're going to sing together. It was on a starry night. And all the angels sang for him. The bells of heaven rang for him. And if you want... If you want a copy of the recipe, I've got a few copies. You can, or you can photocopy one and take it with you. And then after this, the songsters are going to sing to us.
We'll take up the offering at this point in the meeting, please. So in the second half of this morning's meeting, we're going to be concentrating and thinking about the kingship of Jesus and how his kingship should reign in our hearts and then radiate out of our lives so other people can see that Jesus lives in us, exactly the words that the song sang so beautifully this morning. So we're going to sing a song together. 376 if you use your songbook. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me.
Ian is now going to come and read scripture with us. And I said it's not a, a usual scripture reading that you would expect to hear as we walk into Advent, but there is a reason for this. <coughs> and so we're turning to Luke chapter 23 and uh, reading from verse 33. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. <coughs> Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also, also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? <coughs> Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today... You will be with me in paradise. Amen. Bible readings that we're going to be using over the next few weeks all talk about 
the baby Jesus, the king that was born. The wise men came and worshipped him and bowed before him. And yet the cross was the place where this vulnerable king showed why he'd come to earth. The stir up Sunday uh, prayer, stir up we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people. They're the opening words of the prayer and they're found in the common prayer book. And on this last Sunday of Advent, this is what we're asking God for. To stir up means to excite and provoke and beseech. It's an old-fashioned word. We don't use that very often these days, but we don't use it at all, do we? It means to crave, to plead. And so what we're asking God when we pray this prayer is God from the bottom of our hearts, pleading with all our might for him to fire us into action so that we might bring forth the fruit of good works richly. So we will be rewarded richly. It's a good prayer to pray, not only on this Sunday, but it's a good prayer to pray every day. Because there are times in our lives when we get tired, when service is a bit mundane. And many of you are looking at the Christmas programme and thinking, oh, roll on Boxing Day. Because in the Salvation Army, when all the other churches are quiet and down and preparing for Advent, we, we get into fifth gear, don't we? And we don't stop now until Christmas Day. There are times where our heads get mushed and when we don't seem to be able to see our way clearly. Two short illustrations let me share with you. Let's go back to this Christmas pudding mixture. It was hard to stir up, wasn't it? You have to mix all the ingredients together and it's hard without a mixer. It's even more difficult when there was three little hands with their wooden spoons doing their best. Uh, it would have been a lot easier if there'd been a, uh, a food processor, wouldn't there? But the cake needed all the ingredients. We could have omitted a few of the ingredients, but the cake wouldn't have tasted the same, would it? If one of these ingredients, although there weren't many, was missing, it would affect the taste. When we think of ourselves as a church, spiritually, we're all single ingredients, aren't we? And all of us are needed. Because if we're not all here working with one common purpose, stirred up for Jesus, then growing church and church life becomes more difficult. And I guess that's why we need to pray to God to stir each one of us up. So as a church, we will be united and mission focused. When we were younger, on um, my sister and myself, when we were younger on cold wintry mornings, we would often have porridge for our breakfast. <coughs> Bowls of creamy hot porridge were topped with honey and raisins. Our dad put raisins in, honey in, in everything. Every pudding he put raisins. But in the general business of the morning, if mum or dad took their eyes off the saucepan for a moment, what happens if you forget to stir the porridge? It's microwave in a dinner bowl these days, isn't it? But if you get, forget to stir the porridge, it... It burns, doesn't it? It sticks to the bottom of the pan. The only way to get good porridge is to be attentive, isn't it? And keep stirring. Exactly. One of my favourite Bible readings in Hebrews is, uh, and let us consider how to stir one another up towards love and good works. Not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We're talking about stirring in a positive way, not stirring in a negative manner here, aren't we? When we get tired, we all need to be stirred into action by God. If we stay unstirred, then we're liable to settle, to get to coagulate and to become a little bit useless for Jesus. Our Bible translations often use words like provoke or spur each other on. And this is what God's saying here. So we've already said that Advent is the season of waiting and preparation. Yet it's always busy for the Salvation Army. So let's think how we can stir ourselves up for the King of Kings. I must admit, you know, I've looked at Facebook. I'm supposed to be giving social media a miss, aren't I? And it's the wrong time of the season, really. I've started unfriending people, and it's really such a painful process, you know. So I've started with people I haven't spoken to in 10 years. And, and I think I'm down to people I haven't spoken to in five years now. But I do send them a little text message saying, look, I'm just, I don't mean anything by this. I'm just looking after myself, just in case they wonder why I'm not speaking to them. Hey. But when you look at Facebook at the moment, 
That town, just five minutes down the road, is getting stirred up, isn't it? It's getting stirred up for the works of the Salvation Army, for the, for the good works that the Salvation Army is doing. A tattoo artist, a tattoo artist saw our advert and was doing three tattoos all day yesterday. Has anybody been and got one? No, I didn't either. <laughs> Becky said, please go and get it filmed. But he came in here, I was going to go and see him on Friday, but they were out in the town drumming up business for us on Friday. So he came in to see us. I need to have a chat to you, he said. And he said, we're doing really well. I've been in Ice, Ice Traveller, started collecting toys. I've got big bags from Superdrug, from Lidl, and, and, and Boots, and Tesco. And I'm promoting the good works that the Salvation Army do. There's a difference between doing good works as for as a good person and doing good works as a Christian, isn't there? And, and do you know, it really challenged me. And, and, and I've really prayed hard about this as I was preparing for this, for this Sunday service this morning and, and doing my background reading. I had to pray, God, I think I need a little bit of stirring up myself. Because like everybody, we get tired, don't we? And we get spiritually tired. And this is where our spiritual disciplines are so important. I've got some really good advert books I can recommend. I'll put them on Facebook this week if you want to look at any of them. Uh, but it's so important at this time of year that our spiritual disciplines are in place and that we notice each other. If we notice if any of each other are looking tired, that we just get up to them, put our arms around each other and don't just say, how are you? But say, how's your soul? What's life with Jesus like for you this week? In the liturgical calendar, so I say, today is Christ the King Sunday. But when we talk about Jesus being our King, what do we actually mean? Today in this country, Charles is the head of the country, isn't he? He's king. Does he have a lot of authority and power? I'm going to be careful what I say here because I might be... I'm being filmed, aren't I? They might come and take me away after. <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of authority and power. Sorry, king. But he doesn't, does he? Through the, though in the constitution, he's the head of parliament and parliament is in, is in fact his parliament. In fact, he's... It's just very much a figurehead, isn't it? If you look back into the history, what are the historical kings of England like? They were in control, weren't they? Some of them were not good kings at all. They were the head of the country, they made the laws. And, and, and when you look at Christ the King then, how does he compare to some of those kings? The kingdom of God, or heaven, was, was part and parcel of Jesus' message. He was the king even if he never outwardly claimed it. This was the fact recognised by the two brothers, James and John, and they asked for a favour of Jesus, didn't they? It's written in Matthew and Mark, and the, crest, the, the request that they actually... Well, the request was actually made on their behalf by their mum, wasn't it? And she said, may, my, may one of my sons sit at your right and the other on your left when you come into the kingdom of God. They clearly, they clearly recognised Jesus' kingship at the head of his teaching. And with the additional sense of the pomp and the power that a king had at his disposal, she wanted her two sons to have that place of honour. The other disciples, well, what happened? They got upset about it, didn't they? And they got a little bit annoyed when they heard about it. And they got indignant with the two brothers and the mum and they complained to Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He gathered them all together. Called them all together, and this is what he said to him: You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over with their eye officials exercising authority. Not so with you. It's not so with us. That's not how we act. The way of the kingdom that Jesus is talking about is very difficult, different to the kingdoms of this world. It's not a kingdom where the king and top authorities exercise authority over their subjects whoever wants to be first jesus said must be your slave just as the son of man didn't come to be served but came to give his life as a ransom to many in this morning's bible verse reading from luke we see jesus giving up his life as a ransom jesus hanging on the cross and it was here supremely that he was being king no wonder Paul said the cross was an offence, a stumbling block, because it was contrary to the logic of the Greeks. They would never understand this sort of king. They would never understand this sort of kingdom. And they definitely couldn't understand the way of the cross. Because the way of the cross is the way 
of the kingdom. It is from the cross that the king reigns. Pilate had a notice nailed above Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. So then, with this Bible reading, with this image of Jesus on the cross, how supremely do you see Jesus as your king when you see that image in your mind this morning? Well, let's take a few clues from Luke's writings. First of all, Jesus is now to the cross. The Roman soldiers, it's just part of their duty. They drove nails through his wrists and the feet of victims. It would have been agonising for them, much worse than having a tattoo. And yet, does, how does Jesus react as those nails are driven in? Does he scream out in pain? No. Jesus says, Father, forgive them. <laughs> forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. If the king's laws are broken today, what happens? Normally the culprit pays for his crimes and his justice, doesn't he? And then it's done. But what sort of justice did Jesus see done? Forgiveness. That is the way of God's justice. Jesus exercised his kingly authority by putting people right with God. That's the way of God's righteousness rule. That's the divine logic of forgiveness. In Jesus, we have a king whose desire is to forgive those who come to him in penitence and faith. Many people, of course, still refuse to come to him. But wherever a heart is open to him, Jesus welcomes that heart, just as he did one of those criminals who had been alongside him. They showed just how much people can differ in their reaction to the forgiveness of Jesus. One, of course, reacted bitterly. It always happens, doesn't it? There's always one that reacts that way. And we read in verse 39, if you are the Christ, then save yourself and save us. He wanted this king to work a miracle and to exercise his kingly power in a way he expected and in a way he understood. Save yourself, he said. We don't deserve to be here. But then in verse 40, we read that the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, since you are under the same sentence? We're being punished justly. We're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man, this king hasn't done anything wrong. And he turns to Jesus and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus looks at him and says, I tell you the truth. Today you'll be with me in paradise. This is a king who gives salvation. This is a king who opens the door of heaven to everyone and who acknowledges and accepts him. And this is a lesson for us all as his children. As his disciples, we are to follow his example. That's what the Bible says. Because he is our king. It's not up to, up to us to exercise authority and power. We shouldn't think of ourselves as being better people just because we're Christians, just because we wear a uniform. Rather, we come to Jesus in trust and we recognise him as our king. We are all called to serve in a way he served. We are all called to become people of forgiveness, even though it's not easy and it's a working process with many of us. Jesus taught us to pray didn't he, when he said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And we are called, we are asked to give our all and to do it in his service and serve those who came to save. One of the comments on Facebook in the week, and that challenged me as well, I think I read it on Friday, was, thank you, Salvation Army, for looking after all the vulnerable people in this town. And that really challenged me, because we're only scratching the surface, aren't we? We're doing a little bit, and that little bit is so important. But the public see us doing so much more. Going back to that sign, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, the sign was meant to be ironic. 
But Jesus, who turns the world's wisdom upside down, was just coming into his kingdom. His death and resurrection <clears throat> was the death blow to Satan's rule, and it's established Jesus' um, eternal authority over earth. But few people understood its real meaning. But it was actually absolutely true. He was the king of the Jews and still is. But you know, it was written in three different languages. And if you read scripture, it tells us it, that that verse, well, that, that sign was written in Aramaic for the ancient Jews. It was written in Latin for the Roman forces. And it was written in Greek above his head for the foreigners. And that declared, that sign actually declared Jesus as king and lord of all. The origin of Jesus' kingdom is secure because it's beyond this creaking world. Therefore, as we place our trust and our faith in him, we are safe in his kingdom, this world and beyond it. The kingdom is in, in, in us, which means telling and living the truth about God's love and salvation. At what point does Jesus stop being our king? Never. Never. At what point do we stop becoming his disciples? There's another part of the stir up prayer. And it says, stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and free us from our sins. In your grace and mercy, bring us to the fullness of your salvation. For you are alive and you reign forever and ever. There's a beautiful song in the Salvation Army songbook. Who is he in yonder storm? At whose feet the shepherds fall. Tis the Lord, a wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Who is he? Who is he to you? He's Jesus. He's my King. And my life wouldn't be the same without him. So in this Sunday before Advent starts, this stir up Sunday, we're just going to spend some time reflecting on Jesus who is so worthy. So as we sing this song, we're going to say the stir up prayer, the second prayer together after we've sung this song, but it may well be you want to say your quiet prayers to God where you sit. You may want to want to say, stir me up, Lord, because I'm feeling a bit tired. You may just simply want to come here and bow before him. The wise men did. The ordinary people of Jesus did. This prayer, of prayer is always open. Who is he in yonder storm? Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. 
and as a response, I would ask that you simply stand, not bow, but stand and say, read together as a family of God the, the words of the stir up power. So let's pray together. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and free us from our sins. In your grace and mercy, bring us to the fullness of your salvation, for you are alive and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And in closing, we're going to sing Crowning with Many Crowns, which is 358 if you want your songbook. Thank you, Paul. December the 10th, two weeks time in the morning meeting, we will be enrolling two junior soldiers, maybe three, but definitely two, two young people who want to say their promise and say, Jesus, you're going to be king over my life. So just pray that that is a good day for them. And let's leave a benediction with you. Let the majesty of the Father be the light by which you walk. May the compassion of the Son be the love by which you walk. And may the presence of the Holy Spirit be the power by which you walk today and always. Amen. Good morning and God bless you.